1981, a group of friends got together to film a horror movie about five college kids on a getaway in a cabin in the woods. And if you were like me as a kid, you may have found yourself scared out of your mind, sleeping with a crucifix that hung on your wall, only now it was firmly grasped against your chest. After an underwhelming box office opening only to $104,000, word of mouth quickly spread and the Evil Dead would go on to make $2.4 million domestically, which was nearly eight times its budget. Despite its success and growing cult following, director and writer Sam Raimi had moved on to other films and only returned to the franchise after his follow-up film, Crime Wave, had become a commercial failure. After The Evil Dead 2 and his first blockbuster, Darkman, Sam Raimi then returned to the film Army of Darkness. Only this time, with his previous film's success, he could command a larger budget. Creative differences. A tough and grueling shoot. Reshoots. There was a lawsuit, and then Army of Darkness went on to make only $11.5 million domestically against a $11 million budget. However, here we are today, 40 years later, talking about it, and here are five behind the making of Army of Darkness stories that you may never have, or probably, heard of. Hail to the king, baby. Number five. S-Mart is real. It is a grocery store chain located in the northern states of Mexico, founded in 1975. The chain has grown to 30 plus stores. S-Mart is first referenced at the beginning of Army of Darkness and at the end after Ash has returned to his own timeline. The store is only referenced again in the Evil Dead, Hail to the King game, and the Army of Darkness mobile defense game. Now maybe some of you are wondering why Ash is no longer working at S-Mart in the Ash vs. Evil Dead TV series, and instead is now working at Value Stop. Did Value Stop gobble up its competition like Walmart did with Kmart? No, sadly Sam did not have access to any of the rights for Army of Darkness. Number 4. There are as many completed and distributed versions of the film as there were title changes. The original title was Evil Dead 3, then Medieval Dead, then Evil Dead 3, Army of Darkness. But Universal Studios, assuming they knew better, nixed all the titles because they wanted this film to stand on its own, separate from the other films. So Army of Darkness, people didn't even know it was Evil Dead 3, and there were lots of people who liked Evil Dead 1 and 2. In the UK, it was released as Army of Darkness, the Medieval Dead. Now in regards to the number of completed versions, there is a 96 minute director's cut. We're in the editing room with Dino, and he's like, let's cut these skeletons blowing up. And you go, well, okay but they're cool but they don't add anything to the plot so the problem is it was really tough to argue against editing down army of darkness there's an 88 minute u.s television and international release it was the second time we had a movie recut by the studio it was getting old we were like is this what happens does every studio movie get recut and i think the answer is kind of yeah you know, there are people who spend millions of dollars on your movie, and doggone it, they want it how they want it. And then there is an 81-minute U.S. theatrical release. This is Sam and Bruce's baby, right? They created the characters, they created the universe. Leave them alone. Yeah, I don't, like, why? Because you're the one who has, like, the pull with the money behind it, so you have the clout, right? So you're going to be like, listen, I'm going to show my muscles, and it's going to be my way or the highway. It's... It's freaking ridiculous. And it's not like Universal is the all-knowing movie studio that's out there because they almost went bankrupt. And if it wasn't for Abbott and Costello pulling them out of the troubled waters many, many years ago, 
they wouldn't be around today. So sometimes you gotta listen to the creative geniuses. Let's face it, even when you're an expert at something, you're still not perfect and you still make mistakes and you might still need someone else's input. So how about you leave it to the people who made the movie in the first damn place? Number three. In 1985, Back to the Future was released followed by two sequels that saw Marty and Doc travel to the future, then to the past. But did you know that a similar concept was originally meant for the Evil Dead franchise? No? Bruce was not going to have to travel to the future to prevent his son from unleashing the Deadites. Sam Raimi had begun working on the sequel when author Stephen King brought the project to the attention of producer Dino De Laurentiis and convinced him to provide the financial backing for the sequel. And get this, the author, Stephen King, is making a movie in North Carolina with Dino De Laurentiis, Maximum Overdrive, okay? I think he directed that. Okay, so they're out to dinner and they're talking and Stephen King finds out that we were having, from somebody else, he found out that we were having problems getting financing and he mentioned this to Dino De Laurentiis. He said, Dino, you've got to get involved in this. You need to make this movie. And the next day, Dino De Laurentiis called and said, come in for a meeting. So we came in for a meeting, and uh, Dino's favorite expression is, that means that the deal is done. You know, uh, we had a deal in about 20 minutes. Sam Raimi originally planned on making The Army of Darkness the original sequel for 1981's Evil Dead, but De Laurentiis requested that the film be similar to its predecessor. What would have been the third part in the trilogy? Well, that's our next entry. Meddling producers now. <laughs> Don't do that, I wanna see the other one. Number two. The original ending of Army of Darkness saw Ash being given a potion from the wise man that would have put him to sleep until he woke back up in his own time. Only we know how well Ash listens to instructions. This is a guy who can't remember three words, don't forget. Klaatu, Varada, whatever that word was. And he drinks too much of the potion, causing him to wake up in a post-apocalyptic future, which would have been used as a cliffhanger to set up the sequel. I slept too long! There, Ash would lead a army of robots against the Deadites. Screening audiences dislike this ending. You can make a movie called Army of Darkness, and the audience goes, that was a sad ending. We're like, what? Universal also was not happy with the ending and made Sam reshoot it. He thought that was way better, but because the audience thought it was a downer ending, because again now, it's a studio movie, so you're gonna do previews. So at the previews, they were like, oh, it's, it's, no, no, it was just that bad ending, bad ending. So they wanted a positive ending. The ending that we know today was shot on Christmas Eve. So Ash, you know, rips his shirt off and kills the deadite and... Hail to the king, baby. So that's the new ending. We're like, whatever. By that point, it didn't matter. We, we had had such a miserable experience with that movie. Of course they want to shoot a new ending. We did get this ending eventually as Ash fulfilled his journey into the future at the end of Ash vs. the Evil Dead TV series. I think with Army of Darkness and Evil Dead and all the troubles that they've had making the movies and getting to the TV series and then, you know, at one point almost being Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, I think they would have ran into budget issues mm -hmm. and then it would have looked like crap. Yeah. So, I'm glad they changed the ending. I think it's a lot cooler. Number one. Army of Darkness was in production for almost three years and was a grueling shoot. Principal photography took place between Soundstage and On Location at Bronson Canyon and Vasquez Rock's Natural Area Park. It was so hot during filming that Marcus Gilbert, who played Lord Arthur, lost 11 pounds during shooting. Extras did not always work out. When I'm being marched into the castle, so I'm a prisoner, and there's an extra who's right in front of me who's not doing anything that Sam is saying. He's okay, you're soldiers. Let's see you. Left, right, left. You know, he wanted to make sure that soldiers could do a cadence. These are guys who, they're not soldiers. They're not actors. They're not anything. 
They're guys with chain mail and fake beard. They don't even know why they're there. Sam finally walks away and I said, hey, dude, uh, do you understand what's happening here? You know, uh, are you going to do what the director told you to do? He looks at me and goes, I'm not in the military. I went, yeah, but you're playing a soldier. You know why you're here. You're here. You're being paid. You got to do it. He goes, yeah, fuck this. He, he took his beard. He just ripped it off. He threw it in the dirt and stomped off. Days ran long. There were no breaks for weeks. There was a wardrobe malfunction that sent Bruce to the hospital. Post-production was equally as grueling. The new ending was filmed a month after production wrapped. They ran out of money, so Sam Raimi and producer Robert Taper had to put up their own money to finish it. Motion Picture Association of America slapped an NC-17 rating on the film. I mean, I was a producer of the remake of Evil Dead. It's a really bloody movie. It's a really bloody movie. We sailed through the ratings. It's all a crock of shit. Anyway, this movie should be rated PG. Universal wanted the film recut to a PG-13 rating, and Sam Raimi cut out just enough to secure an R rating. What's that about? So we asked them, we, we were like, uh, okay, so what should we cut? They go, well, it's the cumulative effect. We're like, you have to tell us what to cut. I don't know what we cut out. I think we just resubmitted it. Went, there, we cut stuff out. Oh, the fuck out of my face. The producer, Dino De Laurentiis, sued Universal Studios over the sequel to The Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter, which had not been made. De Laurentiis alleged that the studio tried to extort from him the distribution rights for Hannibal Lecter in exchange for distributing Army of Darkness. This pushed the film from the summer of 92 to February 93. The troubles with trying to get this movie out there. Just think about it, right? The Evil Dead 2 was originally supposed to be Army of Darkness, and then there was, hey, no, we want you to do it this way, and then you come and do Army of Darkness, and they have nothing but chaos afterwards, making it seem like it was almost a film that they almost kind of hate now because of how tough it was. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine that even, <laughs> I'm sorry, all these years later, I would still have, like, nightmares about it. I probably would not want to, like, think back on it because it's not going to be fond memories right it's gonna be like oh my god like i almost died um it was you know i uh, we ran out of money universal sucks i mean i think that's like just a normal thing for them so what do you think of our list is there anything that we missed let us know by dropping that in the comments do you like evil dead do you like army of darkness are you excited for evil dead rise even though it does not have bruce campbell in it don't forget, it is the quest for 5,000 subscribers, and you can help us get there by... Liking, subscribing, and sharing. Yes. Along our journey and our quest, when our video hits 100 likes and 100 comments, you'll have a chance to win some prizes. And then, when we hit 5,000 subscribers, and if you commented and liked and done all those fun things, you'll have a chance to win this box of strawberries and scream cereal, signed by Matthew Lillard and David Arquette. And those that have subscribed and are newly subscribed to our channel, thank you. And those that have been with us from the beginning, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you for being here with us on this journey. And until the next five, five. See, See ya. ya.